As Ludwig Klage has uh, written in his uh, analysis of Nietzsche's work and uh, psychological, uh, psychological, psychological Errungenschaften Nietzsche's, uh, Nietzsche himself would, with a part of his personality, succumb to what he himself criticizes Socratism and what Klage uh, has specified as Paulinism the ideology of St. Paul. Yeah. So that is why I come here. I mean, I didn't come here because of that, but uh, uh, the fate has brought me this winter to this uh, bay on the south coast near Kaulimenes. And I see it as a kind of friendly reconquista of the shore. To the ideas of uh, for the ideas of Nietzsche and Klages and against the ideas of Paul, okay, and this is it. How it goes? As is always, no personal offense is made because uh, certainly Paul um, was necessary and necessarily became a saint at the specific time when he landed here and then spread the teaching in Europe because there was a necessity for that as Nietzsche says this is his uh, beautiful uh, elegant philosophical instrument that is the hammer which says um, if you come to a situation where you start to wonder why this or that became like it became and not uh, um, as you would wish or as should be desirable for some uh, ideology is because everything is so as it is necessarily there is no other way for anything so St. Paul was necessary uh, Nietzsche was necessary Ludwig Lages was necessary this program is necessary your speech about Nietzsche is necessary because we are such as we are and we have to do it as we do it and uh, future that was what uh, occurs to me again and again you speaking about uh, in Nietzsche's uh, concepts about the telos that the telos would be the driving force of the will to power to achieve the maximum at a specific time in the future and I come again and again to this idea that it is the conception of time which differentiates Klages, Nietzsche and why also Heidegger comes uh, so deep into this subject about the temporality okay and it is Klages concept of uh, Circular time, which he, by the way, uh, sees as a ruling conception of time in the Mediterranean and the time uh, before the Greeks, uh, the time of the so called Pelasgians that uh, lived uh, here and mainly on Crete also, no? uh, Minoans, no? by Pelasgians. And uh, this circular conception of time is uh, a wonderful possibility to evade the linear time with its telos. And that's why also this informational field of the um, elementary forces, as Klage sees it, no? uh, also of human soul. No? is not bound by a certain future telos because future as such as such does not exist ontologically in the circular conception of time it is the past which is making up completely our present moment and the time pulsates rhythmically as the cosmos pulsates because it's a biocentric conception of uh, the universe the whole cosmos is pulsating ne? and the time is pulsating 
and it throws itself from the present moment back and back and back and comes always immediately forward like, like a fishing net and the depth of time to which it can stretch itself depends on the quality of the morphogenetic field of an, let us say, entity which is experiencing the time, phenomenologically speaking, in quotes, or epistemologically from inside. Okay, if a man, human being, is open to this concept and he knows also and has experienced many, many evenings like that on the coast of, sh of seas and lakes and here in the southern Mediterranean, yeah, and he knows about the time of the Pelasgians and has read and has meditated and has danced and has had a lot of ecstatic uh, uh, experiences in which uh, the boundaries of the ego were fractured yeah, and the soul feel could spread, the morphogenetic field of the soul could spread. So it goes very far away, very far away and can rush back to the present moment and rejuvenate those past moments of elementary similarity that rush up to the present moment and rejuvenate, okay, the experiencer because he is obviously older than his young experiences, but these experiences are similar. Looking at the sea, we could say the sea could uh, have an informational field and a um, um, morphogenetic field of such a kind of... Uh, uh, at the same time simplicity and at the same time massive, massive space power that it could simply exist actually by a continuous remembrance, quote unquote, of its past, okay, and so on and so on. So, above all, it is not oriented towards the future. That is why um, these informational Urbilder, that is that which is uh, kind of uh, the driving force which tries to embody in the meta yeah, of the present moment is not constant. This is not platonic concept that there would be a kind of um, stable linear continuation of these qualities. No, they are Heracleitan. Oh, there, that's not serious, a difficult word. They are, according to Heraclit, constantly changing, and that's why they can uh, embody combine with other open fields. Ne? Some poets can become uh, like a sea for a short time and so on similarly and then it would play similarly as Nietzsche's concept of those uh, power centers. He has this image of the sea which there are countless centers of power which are interweaving so it would be the same, only what would be interweaving would be those informational fields and the face of our earth and the shape of our body and everything would be the outcome of that. And since Clarges postulates that the ego is an effect of a destructive power of the so-called Spirit, Geist, which would be better translated as analytical reason, it destroys the life of this planet because it changes, modulates as a virus, it modulates all the natural ability 
and tendency for similar for similar information fields to combine into a exactly and there it will have Nietzsche's problem into a ego centered emanation of egoistic power which sees the planet only as a collection of raw materials that are to be excavated and sold and other if you reduce it to, to, to human society see other human beings as human resources which are to be excavated educated sent to wars or whatever to be used as a raw material so the sea anytime i come back to this serious uh, consideration of the difference between Klages, Nietzsche and sometimes also Heidegger I come to the conclusion that the difference lies in the conception of time, temporality. Study, if you can, the circular conception of time, which you find explained also in Ludwig Klage's main body of work in the fourth part called Magna Mater. Uh, and